Yeah, this mine definitely has a very spooky vibe to it. So I'm gonna head back out and check out the other stuff that's here. This is just too wet, too muddy. Um, and obviously something is making the chains uh, swing. So time to get the hell out of here. Hey humans, it's Hannah. Welcome back to the channel or if you're new here, I do videos on creepy and disturbing things and today we are doing part two of the paranormal CCTV slash footage iceberg. I am on a quest to find a convincing piece of ghost evidence. I listened to this podcast called Scared to Death with Dan Cummings and his wife Lindsay. I'm sure some of you have heard of it obsessed with the podcast, and I love their saying. What they always say is just one of these stories has to be true. If just one ghost encounter story or one piece of proof or one video, what have you, is real, is true, then that's it. Ghosts are real. So join me on my quest to find that piece of proof. We have a lot of really spooky videos to talk about and to watch together today. So we're going to get right into it. However, this video is very gratefully sponsored. So we're going to roll to the ad read and I will get right back with you. This video is sponsored by Sundays for Dogs. Feeding Winnie is probably one of the hardest things about having a furry daughter. I love her so much. I always say I would go broke for her if she needed it to save her life. However, this girl is so picky. She has a sensitive stomach, but then also she'll just get bored of her kibble anyway. Like after a few days of eating it, she's just like, I'm not eating that. That's boring. So we have transitioned to Sundays for dogs. Winnie loves their food so much, she thinks she's getting just a pile of treats for dinner. Sundays for Dogs is human-grade air-dried dog food that is vet-founded and vet-run. Because it's air-dried, there's no messy defrosting like other healthy dog foods, so you can just feed it to them like their regular kibble, except there's not all the hyper-processing that goes into most kibble brands. Winnie gets excited for Sundays for dogs. She will literally take them like treats. She will do tricks for them. She eats them as if I'm giving her a cookie. My parents' golden retriever approves of Sundays for dogs as well, though, you know, goldens will eat anything, literally, but still, he's cute and he likes it, so... Tonka approved. Get 35% off your order by using my link right below this video, sundaysfordogs.com slash Hannah the Horrible. Or if you just want to dip your paw in the water, so to speak, Sundays offers samples on their website. All you have to do is pay for shipping and handling. That's sundaysfordogs.com slash Hannah the Horrible. Okay, so today we're doing tier three and four of the iceberg. A couple housekeeping things from last time. First of all, the person who created this iceberg apparently does watch the channel. Hi, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, he sent me a very, very sweet email and put his username as the creator of the iceberg. So now we have somebody to give credit to. So thank you to Reddit user Jim Bosseth. I'm so sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, but thank you so much for your wonderful iceberg. Second, in part one, we had one piece that we could not find, or at least I could not find it in my research. There was a video in, I believe it was tier one, it was the Eastern State Prison Ghost, and the iceberg had a link to all of the videos, but that one did not have a link. The video was gone and I could not figure it out by Googling it, but several people emailed me with the clip of what this is likely referring to. So thank you so much to those of you that helped me out with the investigation there. And we're gonna talk about that one real quick before we go into tier three. That clip is only a few seconds long, so I'll show it to you right now. This footage was taken by the Atlantic Paranormal Society, AKA TAPS. And the conclusion about this video is pretty mixed in the comments. The skeptics in the comments are saying that that is clearly just grainy footage of a dude in a black cloak because if you pause the video at a certain time, you can see his feet sticking out the bottom of the cloak. And then 
it kind of looks like whoever is doing this trips a little bit because you see an arm fly to one side as if the person in the cloak tripped. However, believers in the comments claim that there's no way a human acting this out could move as fast as this creature did. I would argue you could speed up the footage if you wanted to make it look less human-like. We don't know for sure, of course. Regardless, I do appreciate how creepy this video is, and I think it's a great jump off point for our video. So without further ado, let's get into tier three. The first one on our list is Barbie doll turns to girl's face. This one is so creepy. Let's just watch the clip first. Here it is. <laughs> So as much as I hate this video for the creep factor alone, I cannot say for sure that it is real. I highly doubt it's a real haunted doll. I doubt this video was set up though either. A far more likely explanation for this, especially if this doll didn't go on to move more in the future, if this is the only movement that doll has ever done, it's far more likely explanation that there's a joint that's loose inside of the doll head or something on the internal mechanisms of the doll is just not quite right or it's a well-loved doll and so the mechanisms inside have worn down over the years and it just happened to move. It's possible a joint in the head of the doll, you know, so that you can move the head forward and back side to side on Barbies as you do. Something in there malfunctioned and she happened to move in that moment. Now, the other thing we have to ask is, I mean, I don't think it's set up in the sense, I do think the girl's genuinely scared. She lo certainly looks genuinely scared and it does look like an authentic reaction, but I do have to wonder why she's randomly being filmed. I guess she could be filming herself because she's filming a play session with her dolls or maybe a parent set up the camera to film their daughter, even though it's kind of weird that she's doing something so mundane. So part of me does kind of wonder if a parent set this up as a prank. I don't know. I do think either way, the girl looks scared as hell. All right, next on our list is just called Girl Ghost. Now, remember from part one, if any of these are in red on the tier list, it means that they have been officially debunked as a hoax or set up. This one is in red. Here's the clip. Are you sure? I don't think so. Yeah! What's that? I couldn't find where this one was officially debunked by anyone. I couldn't find much information on the background of this video at all. However, I do definitely think this one is set up and that it's just a weird, creepy series of very short clips that these people made. But this person only posted a couple of the videos overall of this ghost girl. It's very clear, you see in this video, they do a close up of her and it's clearly just a girl in a white dress. They're just making creepy videos. Like it very clearly shows this is not a ghost. This must be a sibling. I do want to know how they edited these videos though, because I do enjoy the jump cuts in these videos. And I think that they did a pretty good job, especially because this was posted so long ago when social media was fresher. All right. Insane Poltergeist Terrifies Dogs is next. This one's a little bit longer. And just a warning, this one has a sound in it. It's like radio interference. And the sound is super Super obnoxious. If you have sensory issues, it might be hard to watch or at least mute it or just turn it way down. Just a warning for those of you that are sensitive to stuff like that. So let's watch the clip first and then we'll come talk about it. Session of rap performance of the Corn Gold Concerto. Just imagine the foot stomping from the members of the Vancouver Symphony Orchestra responding to that performance by James Anderson. Wow. That's from the CBC Records CD, which brought home a Grammy earlier this year.
So I will be honest, this one actually did have me for a minute. I did have a moment of, wow, that is very strange. Remember how in other paranormal videos, I always talk about um, paying attention to the direction that items seem to be moving on their own in videos. Very, almost always the items moving in the videos move towards the area of the video where you can't see. So the table moving or a chair moving always seems to shuffle towards a corner where you can't see behind the corner where somebody is holding a string and pulling it towards them. And obviously they can't do the same thing by pulling it, by pushing it back unless there's another person on the other side. And that's why this one, I was almost like, okay, okay, because the door goes in both directions. And I did think that was pretty impressive that they got the door to move in both directions. But of course, it could still be set up. Somebody could be holding a string around the corner and then there could be another person in the closet maneuvering the door in that direction. But it was the paper towel roll thing in this video that did it for me. These setups like this always just take it one step too far. And this is just so silly. I will be honest, I don't know how they did it. It's possible that they had a string connected to one part of the paper towel. Somebody was hiding out the window or something like that and pulled the string so that it would flip up in the air and twist around. I, I'm not sure exactly, but I'm just like, why would a ghost just be like picking up a piece of paper towel and just throwing it in the air and then walking off? Like, it's just a very ridiculous, it's just silly. But then that's not all. I went to go look at who posted this video and the person that posted this video has a video from the last video from part one. So remember the last video, we had that guy with the dog and the dog kept hiding under the bed. He went into the attic and then a bunch of weird stuff started happening in the attic after he heard knocks from the attic. Both of these videos got millions of views and I just think they're set up. I think that the other one is set up as well as I discussed in the last video. You can go back and look at that analysis if you want to know why I think that was set up. But the fact that then this one was from the same account was just, yeah. So I don't personally buy this one. Orbs from the early 90s is next. I'm going to read you the description of this YouTube video first for context. This footage was captured in the early 90s in Black Forest, Colorado. A family moved to their new house in Colorado. After a short trip to the mountains for a few days, the residents found out their home had changed. Some furniture was moved. At night, they heard strange voices and shadowy figures could be seen. To find out what was going on, they installed security cameras. This is what they caught. So here's the video of these alleged orbs.
So I will start by saying I do really like this video more than other orb videos. I get real frustrated with like 99.99999% of orb videos are dust or bugs of some sort and people claiming that it's like, oh, it's an orb and it's clearly just dust floating in front of your camera and it's so silly. This is the kind of video that I imagine when I think of orbs, this is the type of footage that I'm actually picturing. Like, I do find this very convincing in the sense that it doesn't look like dust to me. However, this was supposedly from a home security camera in the 90s, like 30 years ago. So the quality is going to be very bad. And I do kind of wonder if it was moths or some sort of large bug that was able to make this look on their security footage. Maybe there was some sort of delay in the camera as well, making them move like that. It would be a more logical explanation. I can't explain the other activity that this family was supposedly having, which, you know, if they are telling the truth, that does make this footage a little weirder. If I found this on my security camera, yeah, I mean, I would think that's weird. If it is a bug, that's a lot of bugs, but... Hey, you know, Beast of Dartmoor is next. This is a really good one, you guys. Again, no setup for this. I'm just gonna show you the clip first. So Dartmoor is in England. And to me personally, this does look like a lion. Now, no one is actually claiming that this is a true cryptid. The Beast of Dartmoor refers to the real, this is a real documented strange occurrences and sightings of something called alien big cats. Alien big cats are big cats, obviously, lions, pumas, cougars, stuff like that. Any big cat that is in an area where you wouldn't normally find them. So they're not native to that area, but they nevertheless are in the wild in that area. And in Dartmoor in the late 70s and onward until recently, people had been reporting seeing big alien, because they're not from around there, cats in the area roaming around. However, in 2016, the Dartmoor Zoo admitted that in 1978, a pair of breeding pumas plus a third were released into the wild from the zoo, which is likely the cause of some of these sightings. It started a small population of pumas in the area. The last puma sighting was in 2010 and they haven't been seen since. It is speculated that that's because whatever remaining pumas there were did not survive that. That harsh winter. Now, I will be fair. This does not really explain this particular video because that that big cat has a mane for sure, and it looks black. There's no way that this is a puma. You can even see its tail looks like a lion tail. It has the little fluffy end like a lion tail. However, I would argue that if pumas were released decades ago, from the zoo. I highly doubt it was the only kind that was released from the zoo and perhaps a few lions were as well. I don't know why it looks black. There are a specific kind of lion that have black manes and the rest of their body is still tan. Have no idea. Maybe this lion, maybe just the way that it was shot and because it's so far away, it's like the way the lighting is, it looks black when it's not. But I believe that this has something to do with those released animals from the zoo in the 70s. Horton Mine, summer 2014. Okay, this one was a huge rabbit hole, so bear with me. This next one is pretty long. However, we're also going to talk about the Horton Mine, summer 2013. In this, we're going to clump them both together because summer 2013 video is in the next tier, which we're talking about next anyway. So I'm just going to do them both right here. Okay, so there's a channel on YouTube called Explore exploring abandoned mines and unusual places. They have over 400,000 subscribers on YouTube. For the most part, they post unassuming exploration videos. They are not overall a paranormal channel or on the hunt 
for the paranormal. Except for two videos on their channel, which have millions of views, both of these videos went massively viral. Both of them are exploration of the supposedly haunted Horton Mine. This one from the summer of 2014, and like I touched on, there's another one. The original was from summer 2013. This man named Frank goes and explores the mine, and creepy stuff happens in the video. So this 2014 one, it's a seven minute video. Frank is exploring the mine again. I won't play the whole thing because it's long and fairly uneventful for the most part, other than mist seen in a couple places. So I'm looking and looking and looking in this 2014 video for what happens in the video. What is everybody freaking out about? Because nothing seems out of the ordinary to me. I don't see any paranormal activity. I don't see him freaking out about anything. I'm looking for timestamps in the comments. One timestamp talks about when the creepy stuff happens and it's at seven minutes, 45 seconds or something like that, which is after the video ends. I literally thought this guy was trolling because I was like, the video ends before that. What are you talking about? I'm looking and everybody's talking about this specific event at the end of the video and I cannot find it in the video. So then in the comments, I find this person's link to a SoundCloud link and they enhance the audio of, again, what everybody's talking about with the background noise more removed. And so it's a clearer audio. I listen to the audio. The audio is creepy. Here's that audio. And uh, there's the uh, ore pass with all the cascading water. And, um, what the fuck is that? I don't know what that was, but, uh, there was a sudden blast of cold air and, uh, I'm getting out of here. Yet again, though. The audio's there, but I can't find it in the video. So I search for other videos on YouTube of the Horton Mine. Like, did other YouTubers cover this guy and his exploration of the Horton Mine? And can they explain what is the creepy part? Someone else posted a 24 second clip again of that same audio that was supposedly from this video. I read those comments and everybody in those comments is saying that Frank, it was in his video, but he deleted it from his original video. He took this creepy clip out of his summer 2014 video. Now, why would he do that? If you don't know in YouTube, if your video is already posted to YouTube, they do have an editor. You can't do great edits in the YouTube editor, but you can cut stuff out, blur something, things like that. You could do basic edits post posting it to YouTube. Anyway, so I find the clip that was deleted from the original summer 2014 video, and it does make sense because looking back on Frank's video, there is a flash of him outside the mine at the very end, but it's literally like two keyframes and then it cuts out to the end of the video. So clearly he deleted this in YouTube. So WTF, right? A lot of people in the comments are saying that he deleted it specifically because it was a hoax all along. It was fake and he deleted it because he decided that he didn't want to be perpetuating this hoax anymore. Or he deleted it because he was found out, somebody figured out that it was a hoax. And so he deleted it out of embarrassment, maybe? Let's rewind for just a second and go back to the summer 2013 video. What is it in that video that's creepy? Well, the 2013 ghost footage I recognized because Mr. Ballin covered it and I happened to watch Mr. Ballin's video on this mine quite a while ago. Mr. Ballin, I love you, but I am here to challenge your video because I am fairly confident this whole thing was set up. Here's the part of the 2013 video that went viral. And uh, taking a look around here back at the entrance, which is there. Okay, here's a, here's a shot looking back towards the entrance. I'm a little bit further in and uh, Looking down the tunnel here.
I don't know why that one chain is swinging back there. Don't know if you can see that in the video or not. Yeah, this mine definitely has a very spooky vibe to it. So I'm going to head back out and check out the other stuff that's here. This is just too wet, too muddy. Um, and obviously something is making the chains uh, swing. So time to get the hell out of here. So I can debunk this one pretty easily. I feel like most of us can. There's a cut in his footage right before he turns the camera back on, turns around to look at the chains. It's not some continuous shot. The chain is swinging behind him. He's breathing heavily. Frank simply ran back, swung the chain as hard as he could, and then ran back to his position, turned the camera back on to get the last footage of the chain still swinging. This is very obvious because not only the cut, but the chain next to that chain is also swinging just a little as if he hit that one on his way back. And then Frank sounding a little out of breath, it feels like he did this all pretty quickly. It would be hard to run that many yards back in a mine like that. That's, like, you know, rocky and also wet and stuff like that. So he's probably a little out of breath from pulling it off. That video got millions of hits. Is it really surprising that he'd come back the next year and pull something like that off again? I feel bad because a lot of people were very much convinced that this was like the best ghost video proof on YouTube, especially because none of his other videos were about ghosts. So it seemed more plausible that he was telling the truth because he wasn't a ghost channel. He wasn't trying to prove that ghosts were real. He just happened to have these like innocent ex exploration videos and then something weird happened. I've said this before, but never underestimate people's motivation to go viral. I'm sure it got a lot of traffic for his channel. There's nothing wrong with that, I get it. So the audio in the summer 2014 video, I don't have a definitive answer for. However, it sounds, I mean, it sounds like an intercom thing. So it sounds like a creepy recording that he got from like a Halloween store or something. And in fact, I did see a comment of somebody saying that it was a Halloween recording from possibly a video game or possibly a Halloween decoration had that recording or there's a little recording box for Halloween that does creepy audio that you could put somewhere in your house. You know, there's stuff like that. Unfortunately, I could not find the specific one. Like I could not find which one he used but I'm fairly confident that it was probably something along those lines. All right, let's move on. The next one is Japanese Ghost Girl at Hotel. This one is just a photo and it's this photo. I'm gonna be honest, I couldn't find any further info on this or why people think it's a ghost. I don't get it. It just looks like CCTV of a girl in a building or something. I did a reverse image search. Literally nothing came up that matched it. It almost looks like a mannequin head though with a wig on it. And I got that idea because when I did the reverse Google image search, mannequin wigs came up. If anything knows anything more about this pick, I would love to hear it uh, if you guys have anybody has if anyone has ever seen this before knows the story behind it if they could email me that would be great so there's your investigative homework like the eastern state pen ghost shadow ghost is next this one is also a short clip make sure you pay attention to the lower left side of the video you're gonna see a shadow thing for context okay let's watch it Okay, so this one, 
I don't like this one. This one really creeps me out. This one is slightly more convincing. It definitely does look like a shadow and it definitely looks human sized and I don't like the way it's walking like a human. And then it looks like it walks through the window. It does look like a human type being like thing. Like it looks like it moves like a human. Now, some possible explanations could be that it's like the shadow of a bug on a camera. Like maybe the bug is moving near the camera and its shadow got picked up by the camera. It's maybe just a glitch in the system, but I don't know. That one really creeps me out. If I was working there and I saw that on CCTV, I would be peeing my pants. That one is weird. That one's weird. I think there's got to be a logical explanation. I'm not saying it's a ghost, but I'm saying that one is. I will give you that one. That one's weird. Ghost plays piano in church. So here's a fun one. Teenagers go out into the woods in the middle of the night and find an abandoned church and think it's a good idea to go inside. What could go wrong? Fucking secret door or something. Want me trying to get out of it? I'm not doing it. Should I? I'm not. You can go. Fuck. I am. Don't. <laughs> that just someone's gonna fall out of there. Damn it! Fucking around. I can't. I can't take this right oh now. I'm so scared. Shit. Shit. Oh no. Oh my god. Turn the light. Turn the light. Listen. Listen. Shit. Shit. It's not the piano. Is that piano? Should we go out there? Go, 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 go. The door's locked. The door's locked. What do we do? What do we do, dude? We gotta make it. We gotta make it run. Oh my god. All right, go, go. Okay, so watch this with me again. It all goes so fast and it's so blurry and bad that you can't really see it. But if you watch the clip closely, they are running out of the church right past the piano and the quote unquote ghost playing the piano. That's what they're doing in this video. They're running out by the pews, right? You can see just a glimpse of the ghost. But if you look very carefully and pause the video, you can, it's hard to catch, but you could see the person's hands. This is literally just a guy in a cloak. I bet you money these kids just had one of their friends go in, one of their friends plays pianos. He went in the church before they did. They gave them some sort of cue or some sort of word for when he should start playing. And he did. And then they acted frightened. A plus 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 for this very creepy Blair Witch Project style video though. Good job, kids. Love it. Very creative. Very cool. And regardless of the fact that it's fake, it's very, very creepy. Indoor hospital. This is apparently a CCTV clip of somebody's spirit literally leaving their body and floating off into heaven as they pass away in a hospital. Let's watch.
This is the dumbest video I've ever seen in my life. Not only does this ghost look like it's straight out of Harry Potter, like it literally comes out and flies away with a wavy white little tail and all. This video, I don't have much to say about it. It's edited. I'm sorry, but this, there is no way if ghosts are real that that's what they look like. Mr. Fritz. Okay. This next one is a creepy doll-like one again. This is one of my favorites. Mr. Fritz creeps me out so much. I have seen this one in the past and I will admit it does seem very realistic. Is it real? I have no idea, but we'll talk about it. So I'm going to give you a really brief summary about the background of Mr. Fritz before we watch the video. Mr. Fritz is the head of a ventriloquist doll who was crafted from an American prisoner of war named Billy Booth during World War II in order to entertain his fellow prisoners. He made the doll out of German newspapers soaked in potato starch, and then he painted it with a pink gloss that was smuggled into the camp. Sadly, Billy Booth was eventually executed executed in the prisoner of war camp by the Germans for not working hard enough. A fellow prisoner of Billy Booth brought Mr. Fritz back to Billy Booth's family in America after the camp was liberated. And of course, over the years, Mr. Fritz had seen some better days. It's been almost 100 years after all. So it's just his head that is left. Is the story behind Mr. Fritz true? I have no freaking idea. It is just a legend. Apparently, the current owner of the doll claims that a note of Mr. Fritz's background came with the doll, and that's how he knows th all that about the doll. And all of this story is on a blog from a man named Dan Baines. The current owner of the doll is a collector named Michael diamond. I would have no way of corroborating this story. And of course, nobody else would either. It was so long ago, the ancestors of the supposed Billy Booth would not be around to tell us either way. However, I will for to give benefit of the doubt. I don't know how the hell this ventriloquist doll thing came into being. If this story is not true, where the hell did this thing come from? Who made this if it's not from the war? It's so weird. Like who would just make this? I guess it's possible. Anyway, okay, so there is a very pretty famous clip of Mr. Fritz and his activity supposedly moving. Here is the clip.
Now that we all have goosebumps, do I think that this could have been set up? Well, yeah, I mean, most videos could technically have been set up. He could have set it up in such a way, opened the door with string, done all the other stuff with string and what have you. However, I am just saying, if Mr. Fritz is not haunted, then I know for a fact that ghosts do not exist because Mr. Fritz looks like the most cursed object on the face of the planet. Even if this video was set up and that movement itself is not real, I am absolutely convinced that Mr. Fritz is cursed. What the actual, he gr I, you guys, seriously, he creeps me out more than Annabelle. Okay, last for tier three, UFO spotted by a US fighter jet pilot. So this video, I'm sure you've seen clips from this or you've at least seen pictures of it because this, there's a lot of buzz around this video. This is also known as the Pentagon UFO videos. That's not our LNS though, is it? It's not. It is an LNS, dude. Well, if there's like another thing, it's rotating. Here's what the wiki summary says about it. The Pentagon UFO videos are selected visual recordings of cockpit instrumentation displays from United States Navy fighter jets based aboard aircraft carriers USS Nimitz and USS Theodore Roosevelt in 2004, 2014, and 2015, with additional footage taken by other Navy personnel in 2019. The four grainy monochromatic videos widely characterized as officially documenting UFOs have received extensive coverage in the media since 2017. The Pentagon later addressed and officially released the first three videos of Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon, UAP, in 2020 and confirmed the provenance of the leaked 2019 videos in two statements made in 2021. Footage of UAPs was also released in 2023, sourced from MQ-9 military drones. Publicity surrounding the videos has prompted a number of explanations, including drones or unidentified terrestrial aircraft, anomalous or factual instrument readings, physical observational phenomenon, e.g. parallax, human observational and interpretive error, and as is typical in the context of such incidents, extraordinary speculations of alien spacecraft. Now, just a reminder that a UFO means unidentified flying object. It does not necessarily mean aliens from another planet. It just means that there's a flying object in the sky that we can't identify. Basically, too long didn't read. There's no official explanation for these. Do I think that this is an alien spacecraft? No, I don't. Not really. I mean, I personally think that the government is... Listen, far be it for me to be a conspiracy theorist, and for the most part, I am not. I think conspiracy theories can be very harmful, very damaging. However, in this particular case, I do think there's things that the U.S. government keeps a secret from us, or they give us a little bit of information such as this just to keep the public happy, but keeps other stuff a secret. So again, I'm not saying that they're covering up alien life. I don't know why, what the motivation would be for men in black to make sure that none of us find out about alien life. What I'm saying is that there's things like spy balloons and spy aircrafts on other countries and vice versa that the government doesn't really want us to know. I think like Area 51, there's a lot of secrets in the military that the government doesn't really want us to find out about because it would probably cause a panic is the most likely explanation. So I'm not claiming I know what this is. I do find it weird that there's not an explanation officially, but I'm just saying that it's most likely something that the government does know what it is and they're just, you know, 
keeping it under wraps for security purposes. That's my theory anyway. Okay, let's move on to tier four. Baby dancing to Green Day with a ghost child in the background. So for this next video, you're gonna pay attention to the left side of the screen about nine seconds into the video. The child is going to look back and pause and look at something. There appears to be a ghost child behind him. So here's that clip. Dan, look at Liza, go like this. Liza, hey, like this. Liza, look it, hey. Eliza, go like this. Were you dancing to uh, some Green Day? Dance, go. Okay, here's another one that I struggle with. It is really creepy and I don't like the way that the child in the background or the ghost or whatever it is does seem to just vanish into thin air after the boy looks away from him or her or whatever it is. My logical skeptical side tells me that the room is very, very dark and we can't see the fact that it's just a child, that that kid has a sibling who stopped in to watch him for a second and then dad moved the camera just slightly and the kid went out of frame very quickly. That's my best guess. It's very hard to know because we don't see the background of the footage very well. And I have a hard time believing that a child this young would see something like that and not panic a tiny bit. This child just looks at her and is like, okay. And that makes me think that it's probably this kid's sibling that he just paused to be like, oh, hey, you're in the room and then goes back to dancing. I don't think this was set up per se. I don't think the dad like did this on purpose. I think the dad really was just filming his kid dancing and then something weird in the video and the way he filmed just so happened to happen. Little people is the next video. So first of all, these are not little people in the sense of literally the regular population of people that happen to have dwarfism. There are little people in the humanoid slash cryptid world, apparently referring to, you know, like fairies, gnomes, leprechauns, like they're mini tiny little people that are mythical in some way. These people have an alleged encounter with them and pay attention to behind the rock when he shines the flashlight on it. So here's that clip. So I guess I can't debunk this, but I do have a few questions. The first question being, why wouldn't you approach them? Like, why wouldn't you go up and investigate? I don't know. Especially if you thought someone or something was on your property. Like, you'd think you'd go up and get a little better of a look at it. Or you would say like, hello, who's there? How could I help you? Something like that. You know what I mean? And then second pet peeve of mine, but these creatures in this video are doing the exact same thing that so many shadow people and ghost videos do where they just like 
peek out behind a corner and then they quickly go back once the person sees them. Every single paranormal thing on fake paranormal videos does that. It's just very weird to me. People do it just because it looks creepy. And to me, it's a telltale sign of something being set up. Rocking chair jump scare is next. Before I play this one, a lot of you have probably seen this one, probably know what I'm talking about, but uh, just a note before I play it for you, huge jump scare warning. The entire point of this video is to jump scare people. It's often put in try not to get scared or if you get scared or if you jump, you lose compilation videos things like that. So in this video, it's like a green hued weird video of a rocking chair suddenly moving back and forth. And then Reagan from The Exorcist, all possessed, is going to pop out suddenly and then run towards you in the screen. If you've never seen this video before, I would, I just, just a huge warning. This is a huge jump scare. So I'm going to play it for you. Highly recommend either. I will turn down the volume in editing, but highly recommend turning down your volume or muting it or just close your eyes for a few seconds if you don't want to see it. But I'm still going to put it in here for the sake of context and for people who haven't seen it if they do want to see it. Some people like jump scares. I kind of like jump scares, but yeah. Okay, if you were closing your eyes, it is safe to look again. The clip is over. So obviously this is an edited video. Like I said, this is the girl from The Exorcist and the rocking chair moving before the jump scare is a cheap trick to distract you so that it jump scares you even more. So you're not expecting it. I will admit this clip, even though I've seen it a million times, still gets me every single time. I still never know when she's coming. I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's just like this one gets me. It makes me twitch and jump every single time. Can't wait to put it in editing when I get to watch it several more times when I screen record it and then put it into the video. It's going to be fun. Okay, the Gable film is next. The Gable film is some lost media type film that was made on eight millimeter film and supposedly found in someone's attic. And then someone bought it at an estate sale and found something pretty creepy on the video. It was supposedly filmed in the 1970s and it shows an attack by the Michigan Dogman creature. It was then subsequently uploaded to the internet in 2007, confusing and tricking a lot of people. As you probably noticed, this one is in red on the iceberg. It has been confirmed to be a hoax and it is just a film. Let's watch it together. It's a really cool little film, cool found footage flick. It's only about three minutes long. So here it is.
This is a horror clip created by filmmaker Mike Agrusa. He did make a couple other follow-up films on his channel to this film. However, Mike never really kept it a secret that this was a fake hoax. I don't even know if you could call it a hoax since it was, you know, a piece of art. But he even made another video on his YouTube channel showing us that it's him in a dogman costume and even reenacts how he filmed that part of it of him crawling on all fours, moving like an animal. So like, as you could see on the screen right now, this is how he did it, which is really cool. Cool, dude. Love it. Bossy the psychic dog is next. This is a 10 minute video. So obviously I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but I'm going to show you just highlights of it. Like the actual creepy parts in the video, removing music for copyright reasons, FYI. What knocked it over? Oh, she's scared. Yeah, she is. What knocked it over? She's been growling under the bed. She's doing it. I don't know, but she's. She's been growling and barking in here and um, underneath my bed and everything. And I've come in and that's knocked over and she's like, she wouldn't go anywhere near it. Does she do that? And, oh, no. She's, that's it, that's in the corner. She can't get to that unless she goes You wouldn't up. push that way anyway. No. Bossy. Bossy. What happened? She's been growling. And... Bossy, what happened? Stop. What's wrong? Stop. Stop.
Okay, so we were talking about orbs earlier. Um, I am so sorry, but those are 1000 billion percent simply just dust in your camera. Like, I'm really sorry to say, but those aren't ghostly beings floating around the room that your camera's picking up that you can't see. It's dust. It's just dust. Now, the probably arguably the creepiest part of this video is Bossy looking at that part of the bed on the floor, smelling something that she cannot seem to get away from, that she becomes obsessed with. Yeah, creepy behavior, but also my dog does that. Like my dog, it's it's usually because there's a treat or a piece of food that's stuck back there that I can't see, but she can smell it and she'll obsess about it until it's out. I just don't personally think that any of this footage proves anything. I don't know this person's actual experiences. Like, of course, I'm not going to speak to that if they actually feel like something is weird in their house so that they're actually experiencing a haunting. I'm just saying that all the dog's behavior can be explained by dog behavior. I mean, <laughs> dogs are weird all the time. Dogs hear stuff that we can't and it's not a ghost. It's just something like way in the distance that we can't hear and it alerts them to stuff. Like that's their whole job is to alert us of things. So I just don't really think it's weird. However, points to this video and to Bossy because she is the cutest girl of all time. And I hope Bossy gets all of the good girl treats. Mermaids Caught by Drone is next. This one is also in red. Just show it to you really quick. Do I even need to explain this? Anybody could see that these are dolphins, right? Giant group of dolphins swimming together. Most people know and knew from the very beginning that these were dolphins. Like, I'm not saying I'm smarter than every anybody. Everybody, most people came forward and were like, what are you talking about? Those are literally dolphins. They're adorable. They're doing their dolphin thing. Leave them alone. Here's another red one. Here's another fun one. Roswell Alien Autopsy. Not going to show this entire video again because it's unnecessary and the video is very long. But for context, before I show you, this is a video allegedly released in 1995 that shows a body recovered from a UFO crash in Roswell back in 1947. There is apparently a 17 whole minute video of government pathologists in hazmat suits performing an autopsy on an alien body. And apparently, we're not going to show it today, but... Uh, some of the video apparently gets pretty graphic with like its internal organs and all them cutting it up. So this film was allegedly purchased from a retired military cameraman who got a hold of the tape or was there. So let's watch part of the alien autopsy. <laughs> Looked like a little female alien that was pregnant because right away, my mind's going wild with ideas about what this might be. Looked like a science fiction movie, literally. Then the scene unfolds and the rest is history. So the men who released this tape, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's funny because the video I watched, there was like real experts and journalists that were reviewing the footage and were like, this could potentially be real. I just think like, Oh my God, my jaw was open the entire time I watched it because I was like, wow, this could potentially be a real alien body. It looks real. I watched the entire autopsy of this creature, pretty much, that the public has since come to know as the alien autopsy and my, with my mouth hanging open, I'm sure. I, I, I can't mo believe I even said a word. Maybe I said, unbelievable. The people that came out with the tape literally came forward later and admitted that it was a hoax. They hired actors to do the pathologist part. The rest of it was a set. A special effects uh, artist made the alien body complete with using lamb bones on the inside for special realism. However, the men that did release this video swear on their life that it was based on a real alien autopsy that they did see a video of with their own eyes. And this is just them. They just recreated it for the public. But we swear we really did see one. It's just that the tape then got damaged 
and then it disappeared. And so we can't prove that we saw it. And yeah, I know, conveniently, the original tape that we saw just got really damaged, you guys. But I swear, we really did see an alien autopsy tape. This is the kind of hoax that really drives me nuts. Because <laughs> getting on TV and trying to convince the entire public of something that is so ludicrous... Okay, whatever. The next one is the Horton Mine Summer 2013. We already talked about that in the Summer 14 video, so we're going to move right along. The next one and the second to last one for today is a poltergeist at Jimmy's World Grill. I would argue that this is a ghost, not a poltergeist, because poltergeists are supposed to be the really naughty ghosts, the ones that like causing trouble and being real obnoxious. Regular ghosts are the ones that are just kind of existing you know, and not doing as much uh, trouble. Anyway, this one's pretty cliche. Pretty much nobody believes it in the comments either. So let's just watch it real quick. So if you've learned from me by now, you can spot why this is fake, right? The objects on the table are being pulled in the direction that's off screen that you can't see. There's somebody there. They're pulling this stuff off with a fishing line. Convenient that the girl gets up right on cue and then the stuff falls right after she leaves. And then all the witnesses in the restaurant also, like you can tell, like some of them see this happen and they are completely unconcerned. If you saw a ghost just randomly move stuff in a restaurant, you would be telling your friend like, hey, look over there, what the heck? They're very, very calm because they can see the person and probably giving them strange looks for crouching down off camera and then pulling stuff off a table with a fishing line. The other telltale sign that this is set up is that the security footage is ridiculously high quality. I'm really bummed about this one. When I first read the title and when I saw people in there, I was like really excited that it actually was a lot of people that witnessed something and that we would see all their reactions and maybe their reactions would be genuine and stuff like that. Like I was, I kind of had high hopes for that video and was vastly disappointed. Okay, the last one for today is a great one to end this video with. It's ROV footage from Sagami Bay. This one's a little different than the rest of the videos from today, and I'm really excited to know what you guys think about this one. I don't think this one is fake footage. This is ROV footage, which means it's remotely operated vehicle footage underwater. It's supposedly like 3,000 some feet in the ocean. So I'll show it to you and then let's come back and talk about it.
Okay, so pretty creepy, right? What do you guys think about this? Full disclosure, there are skeptical comments. Some people saying that a possible explanation for this is that it's a big boulder down sitting on the ocean floor and that there's just like two snails attached to it or something else like attached to it to make it kind of look like eyes. And the way the rock is shaped makes it look like it has a mouth or something like that and that this is simply the pareidolia effect. So I could see that. I think that's a pretty fair analysis. However, I don't know. It could be some weird creeper creature sitting at the bottom of the ocean. I'm not kidding. According to the Googles, we've only explored 5% of the Earth's oceans. That means 95% of the Earth's oceans, which is the majority of the planet, has not been explored. I just think that it would be kind of like the way that the universe is so vast, it would be unlikely that there's not aliens somewhere. The ocean is also so vast that it's very unlikely that we have discovered every ocean creature that there is to discover. I totally think it's plausible that I'm not saying the Loch Ness Monster is a real thing or anything like that. Maybe it is and she we just haven't seen her. But I'm just saying like it's totally plausible and not silly, in my opinion, to say that there could be weird creatures down below that we have not discovered yet and that would be pretty cool if this was one of them the uh, i will admit i am kind of on board with the rock slash boulder theory just because it is weird that this thing is not moving or blinking or swaying whatsoever and I do think that that is probably what this is however i'm kind of sticking with the it's a creature of unknown origins shtick just because I'm having fun with it in my head. And regardless, even if this is just a boulder, I do think it's such a cool video because it does make you think about the ocean and all the stuff and undiscovered stuff down there and existential crisis initiated. All right, guys, that's going to be it for tier three and four, part two of this Paranormal CC TV adventure. Next time we're going to do tiers five and six at least. I'll see how long the script is for that. If it's not long enough, I might do an additional tier because if I remember correctly, the next two tiers are not as thick as the first four have been. So if that's the case, I will. Yeah, we'll see. I'll, I'm definitely going to keep going with this iceberg though. So, all right. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, Sundays for Dogs. Please like the video to help the channel and help me. And I will see you all in the next video. Thank you so much to all of our top tier patrons on the screen right now. Special shout out to top tiers, Colin Holmes, The Deck of Cards, Michelle Valdovinos, Tom L, Little Kittle Cat, Mitchell Schaefer Meyer, Mike, Alice Paul, Brittany Phillips, Momo Neon, Marita 144, Sage K, Elderly Hipster, The Puppy Hag, Rebecca Jackson, Toby, Carter, Kawakan Anime and Gaming Convention, Sarah the Crazy Fish Lady, Maxie, Ellison Luna, Tiny Mighty Bookworm, A Bunny Apparently, Leon Bannock, Elliot Fink, I Am In Your Walls, Habromania, Cyber Dog Investigations LLC, Vicky Cat, Amy B, Tick Urch, Dead Without the E, Ball, Olivezilla, Chara, MH Dave, Ami, Lindsay R, Miss T, Lou Raccoon, Shanna R, El Magnifi Coco, Victor Schmiel, Laura Winter, Lilith, Dana, Ashes, Arsic Ghost, Goshzilla, and our newest, Gabriella L, and Aria Anomaly.